Hey photographer, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I make videos all about photography. And if you clicked on today's video, odds are I'd get along with you really well because chances are you hate editing flyaway hairs as much as I do. No! No! <laughs> it's literally the one of the most time consuming things about my post editing process. And through the years, I've learned a few tips and tricks to try to make it speed up as fast as possible. So I'm gonna share with you those today. And if you stick around towards the end, I've got some bonus tips. Um, but before we jump into my computer, just for clicking on today's video, I do have a freebie for you. So if you're saying, hey Michelle, I could really use just a quick like 500 bucks in my photography business or a thousand bucks in my photography business, just some cash flow in to my business, then I hear you. I've got some ideas that you can try. So if you would love that cash injections freebie, you can grab it with the link down in the description box below. Now let's get into my computer. All right guys, so I have three different scenarios I'm gonna walk you through with some different tips and hopefully you can walk away with some good helpful information. So in this first example, I'm gonna talk about the quickest way that I like to edit flyaways. Um, obviously this won't work on every situation, but I'm gonna show you for the times it does work. So in this first one, I'll zoom in here. If you just have a little bit of hair that's going crazy, like most of the time, like most of the hair looks pretty good. It's just a little, maybe there's a bump in the hair on these sides that you'd like to just bring in real quick. The fastest way I like to take care of that is actually using the liquify tool. So you just go up to filter and liquify. And then you choose the first tool over here, the forward warp tool. And then I leave it on all of the standard default settings. I don't ever touch them usually. And then we'll zoom in here. And then you're just gonna pull down that hair to where it looks more natural. So we're gonna pull down the hair so it's not a huge bump in the back, maybe a little bit bigger brush size, and push this hair in. Push it all in just so it's not so out there. Especially if you have like a girl with bangs, this can be a lifesaver too to pull it down if you need to, or just like reshape it. Um, it can be a lifesaver as far as time-wise. And I won't be too meticulous here because I can go on forever. And then you can just toggle on preview on and off to see what you did make sure it still looks natural and say, okay. And then also, um, if you got hair in the face, the best, my favorite way to do, especially when it's only a little bit like this, is actually use the healing brush tool. So I would recommend to always make a copy of what the layer you're working on, so the background layer. So that's Command J on the Mac, and grab your little healing brush tool here, and then Alt click to sample the part of the skin that you wanna use. And then, if it's just little hairs like this, I just quickly do the healing brush because it does a pretty good job. And then a fix in there, but that just gives you a quick idea of what you can do for hairs on the face. If you got a ton of hairs, honestly, I would probably just nix the photo, but if you absolutely love it, that's gonna just be tedious. That's just what it is, but. Okay, so that's the first scenario. The second scenario here is where we have a pretty good backdrop to pull from. So I love solid backdrops. It makes this part a lot easier, um, but this actually has a lot of flyaways. So the liquify I don't think would look great on this. So I'm actually just gonna clone it. So again, I'm gonna make a copy of that background, Command J. I'm gonna go over to my clone brush tool here. I leave the opacity at 100 and I put the flow at like halfway, about 50 to 60%. This just softens the brush for me personally. I just like the look of that. I think it looks more natural. So when you're zooming in here, uh, we can just quickly go over it. I always like to take a sample of where there's any breaks. So like right here where the line is on the shadow of the building, I like to start here just to keep it looking the same. And then I'll just go over it. And then obviously this is like a big color thing, right? And hopefully, I'm surprised it was so dark for some reason, but um, in this situation, I would just go over to my healing brush, hold down on it and choose this patch tool here. And then I would select the section that I just did. If I felt like it looked too weird, um, I'm gonna deselect cause that's gonna grab the hair and I don't want to grab the hair. Okay, and then once I got my selection, I just move this over to where I'm telling it where I want it to pull from or where I want it to copy. And so I just click that and then you can deselect it and it looks pretty, I mean, I'll probably redo like the bottom here, same thing, just to make it look a little bit more like it matches the color. But that will save you time too if you don't wanna like be really technical about 
the, the cloning of it. Whoops. See, I'm already doing this. I'm getting a little bit of a perfectionist. It is part of the game <laughs> being a photographer. And then again, same thing over here. I start on the break line and then I'll just go over a little bit. Oops, I pulled too much. And then you just work the clone tool. And I know it's a little more tedious, but especially when you have like a solid background, it, it really isn't too bad. And then one thing that I see photographers do is they go too far into the hairline. So, cause they're going to, and then it just doesn't look real. So I would never go like, here and then start doing that because it is almost too perfect she almost looks cut out so I like to leave a little bit um let's go there I like to leave a little bit of the just kind of the wispy hairs just so it still looks natural and even up here you could either clone it out if you want and then use the liquify tool to bump it up but I'd actually just fill it in so I fill in <laughs> I fill in holes in hair all the time so I'm just taking a sample of like the thicker part of the hair and then I'm just pulling it up there. And that just, again, fills in the hair and makes it look natural. So this is the other technique. I love the clone tool. Definitely um, when you have easier, you know, backgrounds to pull from, that's a great sample or great use of the way to do that. Okay. And then lastly, we have a little bit more of a complicated background, obviously. I'm not going to be able just to swoop around her head. And unfortunately, I don't have any other magic tricks other than just using the clone tool, but being smart about using it. So again, I'm going to make a copy of the background, go to my clone tool, make sure it's 100 opacity, 50% flow. And then with lines like this, I just grab up here where... Um, again a break line is and then I'll drag it down this way and then it should copy as I go because it is repeated and I'll show you why that making that copy of that um, background was so important so I got a little off here so let me correct that there okay so I would just go around make sure kind of go around the hair now you can see that I copied a little bit into the hair here it got a little dark and that looks fake obviously so then I just take my eraser tool I'd go at a hundred keep it at hundred percent fifty percent flow and then I just erase back to where it looks natural small brush size and it just makes it look like hair again because I'm being like more crisp in my lines and then I switch back to the cloning tool and then I continue on my way and then it just takes a little extra time but by using these breaks lines and then by using that erase tool then you won't have to feel like you get into a mess where you're editing too much and even this is probably personal preference I probably want to edit more than that and then I might edit a little bit down here but you guys don't have to feel like you have to edit every stray strand that there is. Um, even this, I'd probably typically leave. But if you want to be particular, since they're really thin, I go back to that healing brush. And I just do it that way. Like if there's one bright piece of hair out here, I'll just take the healing brush. And there's multiple colors, so sometimes it doesn't like that. And I'll go back to, I just switch back to the healing brush, to the clone brush, until it feels more natural to me. Um, but you can get a little crazy here, but this to me is totally acceptable. So it's up to your standards, but obviously, and then let me go back cause I didn't do the, I would do the erase effect on this too, obviously, cause this looks not real. <laughs> Make sure you're obviously on erasing from the layer you're working on and not the background layer. If you want to see the difference here, let me toggle that top one off. So that's where we started and that's what we did. Literally 30 seconds or a minute tops and we're already almost done. So don't let things like this intimidate you because you can absolutely do it. Just know, just be careful. And that already looks a thousand percent better than that. Boom. Okay, let's talk some bonus tips. If you stuck around this long, thank you. I feel like the best way and the fastest way to deal with flyaways is in camera. Taking the time to try to manage them before you even photograph them so you don't spend hours and hours in Photoshop. I know that's not always the perfect scenario, but if you can, I highly recommend. It'd save you a lot of time and frustration. So the first tip is to actually work with a pro hair and makeup artist. If your client can afford it, I would highly suggest them just 
telling them to book an appointment just because they use obviously lots of product, lots of hairspray to get those flyaways down. If you can or if that's not part of your process or workflow with your client journey, then just bring hairspray yourself. Seriously, take the time in between shots, especially if it's a really windy day, and hairspray her hair. You can either hairspray a brush and comb it through, you can even hairspray your hands and kind of pat it down and then obviously have some wipes or something so you can wipe down your hands or have her do that in a mirror. That helps a ton. Two, you can get what's called a, I think it's like a hair gel wand. I'll link it down in the description box below as well. But I love this thing. It's like, it's clear gel basically, and it looks like a mascara wand. And it's perfect for like baby hairs that are just driving you nuts. And you just, it's clear so it won't show and it easily washes out and you'll just like, you know, comb it through her hair and it works wonders. And if you want to be careful of obviously sanitary reasons per client, you can just order multiple, you know, wands and then just throw them away as you have have new clients or if you have to use it etc but those work it works amazing highly recommend that another tip is to bring hats hats are a great way especially if it's a super windy day to manage the hair and then it's so much easier if you have a hat so the hair is just not blowing crazy out of the way and then the last tip I have for you is to also consider braids if it's a crazy windy day and the girl is up for it maybe braiding her bangs back or having her hair in a loose braid down below if you just can't if you don't have any other options sometimes that is a great way you know worst case scenario to just try to manage the hair so she doesn't look absolutely crazy all right guys that's all I have for you today don't forget to grab that cash injections freebie if you haven't already down in the description box below and if you found any valuable information in this video at all I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up that just really helps support me and my channel as well as consider subscribing if you love photography and you love photography videos um, I would love to have you around and then also comment below what is your biggest editing pain point or is this it and did you find any valuable tips today or if you have any other questions please comment below I read all the comments and I try to do my best to answer them the best I can if I know how so until the next time guys I'll see you in the next one bye